okay, you're only at noon, Emma. See, I don't know. I can't ever, and I don't even know what day. I can't ever figure that out. I'm like, I, don't, I can barely like figure out East Coast, West Coast, all of that. So um, I know the girl in UK, it's like two in the morning there for sure. So, okay. I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you got some much needed time with your family. Um, or friends or just some downtime to think about what you're thankful for to think about maybe where this year has taken you um, where it's headed and just what your plans are all in all um, for me it was a really <clears throat> good time to reflect on how far I've come one of my favorite things is whenever stuff starts popping up on my time hop because I don't care who you are even if it makes you cringe it makes you smile right? It makes you smile that you've had that growth. Um, sometimes I'll see things and I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I used to post that way. Or, oh my God, I, ugh, I can't believe I used to look that way. But regardless, I hope that, um, my prayer for you is whenever time hop pops up that, that you see growth period, that you see growth, whether it is within yourself, your family, your career, um, your mindset, whatever it is, because if your time hop is popping up and you're wishing that you were back in a, a time a year ago, then you need to adjust. I, I would, I would argue with you that you need to adjust. You need to adjust your today and your tomorrow should look better than your yesterday because of your life, the lives that you are changing. And it should make you feel proud. If it doesn't make you feel proud, then you need to readjust and realign with your goals, your visions, your dreams, and, and the daily actions. I mean, don't get me wrong. I look at my Tom Hop and see pictures of Grace and Sam, and I'm like, oh, they used to be so little and cute. But at the same time, I think, oh, thank God I don't have to change their diaper anymore. You know, it's cool to watch people grow <clears throat> and to be proud. And so I hope my prayer for you is whenever you go and look at your time hop, you don't feel stuck. You don't feel regretful. You don't feel like a year's gone by and here I am still in the same place. A year's gone by and, oh, nothing's changed. Like what fun is that? So that is something I love. Cause you know, a lot, we post a lot during the holidays. So of course there's like boo coos and stuff on my time hop. Um, I am going to go over some of my thoughts really quick. I am going to go over Haley's responses and then I'm going to turn it over to Leanne cause I really want to hear from her. Um, these are some of my thoughts and some of the questions that have been asked to me recently and things that I have tried to actually write out and make meaning and sense of so I can, uh, well, I'm going to interview you. How about that? Is that less scary? <laughs> um, I, I hope that's less scary. Okay, good. <laughs> um, just some things like I am one of those people where I have really great ideas, but it's hard for me to kind of like put my finger on them and to label my emotions and different things. But I am someone who always searches for the meaning behind everything. So I was asked recently, and I don't know that I've ever talked to y'all about this, but I was asked by Leanne probably a month ago, talk to me about bulletproofing your mind. What does that really mean? And I thought, well, it just means I bulletproof my mind. But I dug in a little deeper and actually I did um, a training for someone and I was like, what does it actually mean to bulletproof something? Like, why do we bulletproof things, right? So this is what I kind of discovered. This is what I put meaning to and I made it make sense to me. When you bulletproof something, and if you've already heard me say this, just ignore me, but this was just a huge aha moment for my brain. When you bulletproof something, a lot goes into that. You have to know what is it up against, and you have to also know when you bulletproof something, it is because it is highly susceptible to be attacked, right? So we don't bulletproof something that isn't valuable. We don't bulletproof something that um, isn't mo like likely going to be under attack. We bulletproof things that are valuable. We bulletproof things that are likely to um, become attacked. What is likely to become attacked? Negativity or positivity? 
a positive mind is likely to be attacked. What does neg what what does the devil have to attack if you're already negative, right? What does your neighbor or whoever it may be have to bring you down if you're already down, right? So the way I, I was thinking about this before is, well, my mind's bulletproof. And I had this vision in my head of someone that walked around with all of this armor, right? But what does that really mean in real life is quite the opposite. What it means is I am proactively bulletproofing my mind. I am proactively knowing what weapons are going to be taken up against me. Why is that important? Because when you proactively know where you're weak, if you, when you proactively know where you're most likely, um, your attackers are most likely to come from, then you can stay proactive and you can stay positive and you can stay in the present mindset of like going out and, and moving closer to the positive. Here's what I mean by that. Something that's bulletproof is already prepared. Somebody who is not bulletproof and they may be like, um, I envision like a knight walking around with a sword and all these shields, right? That to me is not proactive. That to me is someone that knows a fight's coming and they're, they're going to have to battle it out every single time. Okay. What I mean by bulletproofing your mind is knowing where your mind is weak, knowing what you struggle with, knowing who in your environment is most likely to attack you or bring you down or doubt you and already having those boundaries set up, already having that bulletproof glass installed in those places. Guys, you can't bulletproof negativity. You can't bulletproof um, self-doubt. You can only bulletproof things that are valuable and that are positive. Why? Because you already have the enemy on the inside. If it's already negative, if it's already toxic, I will tell you that this means looking at your environment, right? Think about it. The president, they look, I don't care who, if you like the president or you don't. Okay. Um, they have to look at environmental factors. They have to look at their circle they have to look at who's on the outside against them and who's on the inside against them. Now, hear me when I say this. I am not asking you to sit, or, sit around and become so paranoid that you think everyone's out to get you. What I am asking you to do is take a look at your mind. Take a look at your mind and ask yourself, how strong is your mind? And if it's not, ask yourself, where do I need to install some bulletproof glass? Is it my... Um, dad who's constantly negative? Is it my neighbor who makes fun of what I do? Is it people that are mean to me on social media? Is it my own mind that speaks negatively towards me? Where do I need to install bulletproof glass? When you're aware of your weaknesses, then you can go and you can bulletproof those areas of your mind. If you're not aware of your weaknesses, if you're not aware of the things that creep in and get you down, then you will be that knight looking for your sword, looking for your armor, and you're already under attack, right? Whenever you bulletproof something, it is because it is highly likely to get attacked. And it is because you want those bullets to never penetrate. It, people don't bulletproof something because they can survive a bunch of gunshot wounds, right? I want you to think of your mind in the exact same capacity. Um, I always tell people my mind is bulletproof, not because nothing affects me or nothing's flying at it. You bulletproof something that's probably going to have things flying at it negatively all day long, but you've already installed that bulletproof shield. You've already installed that and your mind is so strong and you are so, like I say, solution focus so that when those things or those people or those areas are trying to get you down, you're already focused on a solution. You're already so focused on the good in that, the silver lining, the what am I in control of that? Let's say someone's credit card declines. Let's say someone turns off their auto ship. What? Okay. I'm so focused on this uh, positive on what I can control in my business and my mind that those things literally don't penetrate me because I've bulletproofed those areas of my mind. So I challenge you to really take a look and ask yourself, have you just put up a wall 
where you don't see those things and you don't have to face those things? Or have you actually bulletproofed those areas? You still know they're there. You acknowledge them and you fight through them. If you haven't, it's like our fears, right? You don't just put up a wall and um, surround yourself and, and, and that's how you face your fears or overcome them. You face your fears and overcome them by lowering the gate, lowering those walls and getting out there and kicking butt. That's how you grow. That's how you become a better person. That's how you become a better leader. That's how you grow in your self-confidence in all of those areas by actually facing those things, acknowledging that they're there and knowing what they are. Um, it's like a kid, if they're allergic to something, don't you want to know what their allergies are? right? You don't just want to put them in a bubble. You want to, like, I love my daughter has allergies. My thing that I'm so proud about my daughter is she's an advocate for herself on her allergies. And she has been since she was three. I didn't put her in a bubble, but I taught her how to advocate how she feels, what the signs and symptoms are. We're the same way, guys. We're just like children. We have to know our signs, our symptoms <coughs> for when we're getting a uh, negative, <coughs> for whenever our mind we maybe didn't install bulletproof and we've just ignored. I mean, the perfect one for me is my dad. You've heard me talk about this so many times. He is so negative and he can set me off like no other. And going home for the holidays is very hard for me. It makes my anxiety skyrocket. But I know that. I know that ahead of time. I prepare my brain ahead of time. I know I have no control over those variables. But what I know is I have control over my mind, how I respond. And it's the same thing in this business, in life, as a mom, as a friend, as um, a girlfriend, at whatever you are, whatever your role is in life, it is critical that you bulletproof anything that makes you a weaker person. Um, having flaws, having weaknesses are not what will destroy you. Letting those flaws and those weaknesses become an obstacle for your tomorrow, an obstacle for your next level up, an obstacle for your next win, that's what will destroy you. Think about this, if you're running a race or you're going through an obstacle course, how much better can you perform if you know what you're up against? Know what you're up against. Know what you're up against at all times mentally, and you can conquer anything. Um, my struggles are different than yours. You may love the holidays. The next person, it may make them go into, like, the seasonal depression. Like, everyone's struggles are different. You have to know yours. You have to own yours, and you can't let those define you. Um, let me see. How are you envisioning your tomorrows? Are you envisioning your tomorrows? Are you envisioning your December? Are you envisioning what's ahead to be greater than what's behind you? God promises that um, your best days haven't happened yet. Do you believe that? No matter what you believe in, no matter if you are Buddhist or you're Catholic or whatever you are, do you believe that your tomorrows are greater than your todays? Do you believe that your tomorrows are greater than your yesterdays? If you don't, then you don't believe you're in control of your life. If you could sit here and look at me and tell me my best days have already happened, I would tell you like, well, what are you looking for then? Right? What are we living for if we feel like, oh, we've already reached our potential, the best things that are ever going to happen have already happened to us, and there is nothing else out there. There is nothing else in life that, you know, really think about what are you, what do you envision whenever you are thinking about your tomorrow, when you're thinking about your next Tuesday's paycheck, when you're thinking about who you're going to talk to, what your Christmas break looks like. It should look like no matter what happens, better than where you currently are because we get like I know that cliche saying you get um, a chance to get up every day and start over that goes for anyone that doesn't mean just the person that had a sucky day that means the person that had a great day wow guess what they can go have an even better tomorrow maybe they changed one life well guess what now that means you have the confidence to go talk to a few more people really think about how are you viewing, how are you envisioning your tomorrow? Um, in your business, I am going to say this, and then I'm going to jump into these other two things, and then I'm going to interview uh, Leanne. Are you immersed in your business? Let me tell you what that looks like and what that means. 
That does not mean that you wake up every day and you do your three steps and you put on your Thrive t-shirt and your Thrive hat and you go and you set up a cardboard table outside of Walmart, okay? That is not what being immersed in your business looks like. I don't care what we're selling. I believe in what we promote. I believe in our company. I believe in our comp plan. That to me is irrelevant of why I'm put here on this earth, okay? Being immersed in your business is knowing that every day you wake up, you get a chance to change someone's life and being cognizant of that, no matter what you do, whether you are on the subway, whether you are on a flight, whether you are um, at the grocery store and there's someone behind you that can't pay for your groceries. It is being conscious that there are people out there that need this. That's what being immersed in your business looks like is being a good person and knowing that you have something that can change people's lives and being conscious of God has is placing those people all around you, right? Dipping your toes in it looks like working your business at different hours of the day, only when you feel comfortable, only when you feel like it's convenient. And I really challenge you, look in the mirror and who are you? Are you, I can use Kat as an example, are you Cat who does thrive from five to six, but is a completely different person? Or are you Cat that bebops around this world and offers hope to any and everyone that comes across her path, no matter where the hell she is? I can tell you that's how Cat runs her business. Cat is not a walking billboard of thrive. Cat is a walking billboard of hope, of someone who's happy, somebody who's taking control of her life. And I, I know that, yes, she's my friend, but I, I see, like I saw her in her natural habitat, if you will, this weekend, uh, I just dropped by a place and she was there and I got to spend some time with her. And I mean, if you watch her work a room, you would think she's the mayor, right? Because she just lo goes and loves on this person and loves on this person and loves on this person. And it's not to get a sale. It's because she bebops through her day thinking, who can I make a better person today? And guess what? People want to be around that. People want to feel better. People want, they want to have hope and, and they don't care if she's selling unicorn toilet paper. If Kat's happy and she's bebopping, around making a difference, man, they want a piece of that, you know, and I want you to think about that. How do you work your business? Do you dip your toes in it and do you make it uh, and weird and it's over here on a shelf or are you a happy person that thrives, that has an answer to like people's problems, that has the solution for the way people are struggling? Be, um, be that person, be that I don't care if you never even talk about Thrive to that person. You could be the answer to their prayer in a totally different area, and I promise you it'll come back to you tenfold. They may never join you. Their cousin may never join you. But who knows? Somebody they may be sitting with at a family reunion is deficient in vitamin B12, and oh my God, I saw a post. That's not why you're out being nice to people, but that's what happens when you are out being nice to people. Does that make sense? I don't want you waking up every day and scouting everyone around you thinking, ooh, who can I get? But when you wake up every day and you're nice to people and you're a good person and you are spreading sunshine and positivity, that is why we're successful in this business, okay? Um, I want to shout some people out really quick. Um, I want to shout out the top 10 um, people on their enrollments right now. And I know this can change at any minute, but y'all, I'm so excited for these people. Shelby Fernandez is sitting at 50 lives changed this month. Y'all, a month ago, this girl was crying, telling me she didn't even know she wanted to do this anymore because she didn't believe in herself. And now she has changed 50 lives this month. That's pretty damn impressive. And that's a freaking mind shift if I've ever seen one. Um, Kat's changed 42 people's lives. Samantha has changed 38 people's lives. Jessica Norville, 34 people's. Tyler Bruce, 33 people's. Um, Janie has changed 30 lives this month and Janie, correct me if I'm wrong. And I don't know if she's on here because her grandfather did pass away, but I want to go with Janie and I could totally be making this up, but I don't even know if she'd ever even enrolled a customer until this month. And she's been with us for almost a year. Um, watching that little firecracker transform into someone who believes in herself is freaking phenomenal. Um, Julia has changed 26 lives this month. 
Um, Haley has changed 21 lives. Christy Richmond, 18. And Tiffany Harrell and Carissa Simshauser have changed uh, 15 lives this month. Y'all, there are so many more of y'all. I just went and looked at my chart and took the top names because they deserve a good job. They deserve a heck yeah. And one of the biggest things I've learned lately is if someone's doing better than you, don't talk about them. Talk to them. Okay. Think about that. If someone's doing better than you, because I'm going to tell y'all, like with my name on the leaderboard, I have had a lot of hate in my inbox. Guess what? I got there. I've gotten to where I am because M Hastings is one of my best friends and someone I talk to every single day and someone who has bigger numbers than me. And you know what? I tell her, teach me how, what are you doing? Where's your mind at? I don't talk about her jealousy and, um, Envy are some of the nastiest things that can poison your mind. If someone is doing better than you, what I challenge you to do is let them inspire you. Let them motivate you. Let them tr help transform your mind. I will tell you, y'all, our team, these people's names I just shouted out, would love nothing more than a, hey, good job. How are you doing it? Like, that's what our whole culture on this team is about, is sharing, inspiring, and pouring into each other. And I love that about our team. And just because you're not one of the top people doesn't mean you don't have anything to offer. Doesn't mean that you don't have your breakthrough coming, right? Um, so just don't be afraid to talk to people. Okay, really quick, Haley. Haley, um, these were the questions I asked her. Haley is 20 or 21 years old. Haley lives in Oregon. She lives in Albany, Oregon, a very small town. And these are the things I asked her. Without having any experience in network marketing, it is very hard. I said, sorry, how did you do this? She's $80 away from going 40K or 4K. That's phenomenal. She's earned her VIP 800, her VIP 1600, and she's about to earn her iPad bonus. And I said, how have you done this with no experience in network marketing at all? She said, it's very hard not to sound spammy, but learning from this team has been amazing. If there's anything I can seriously tell y'all, it is to ask freaking questions. I swear I've driven Core, Ashley, and Julia probably insane and back twice with all my questions, but it's paid off and that's why they're here is to help. Yes, I will say that. If y'all don't ask questions, like we don't know what to help you with. And I will tell you, I was and still am the most annoying person to my upline. I ask him questions all the time, but it pays y'all. It pays to be in your upline's ear like ask them all the questions that's the only way you learn um i said how is your mindset her mindset right now is different than it's ever been it's positive um now that she's met these goals hold on now that she's met these goals that she set for herself it's been incredible seeing herself transform she doesn't have any time for negativity or doubt. It is always how can she make things happen and who can she help while doing it? Um, I asked her to share what her mind looked like before this. And I think this is very important because I want you to know where Haley came from. Um, as Court knows, it took me a couple of times to actually really get myself on board with making this leap of faith. Um, like a year. Okay. Let's I'll call it like it is. It was a year. <laughs> um, she was in the darkest place she's ever been in life. Um, she thinks it's important to talk about the hard parts of life so that we can really appreciate the good places that we're in. She was suffering from depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation. She doesn't make, mean that in a light way. She was hospitalized. She was having seizures for, um, for lack of self-care. When I met her, y'all, she had made a post on Facebook that basically was like, I'm done living in anxiety. I'd rather not live anymore at all. Um, ended up hospitalized that night and it wasn't a cry for attention. It was like, she hated her brain. She was had anxiety so bad and she knew there had to be a way out. Um, as soon as she got hospitalized, she found out she was a pregnant, everything changed for her. Her daughter is 100% her motivation and why she can't answer these questions herself because morning sickness. Um, looking back at where she was, she'll never let herself go back there and there are so many reasons. As for this company, 
it's one of them. It's given her a thing to focus on and to work her ass off for. Hard work pays um, everyone who can stay driven, can stay positive. Be the type of person that you need to meet. Be the type of person that you need whenever you're having your worst day. Her day consists of waking up, checking her back office, and seeing where she's at. She thinks of three things she can do to get herself where she wants to be for that day. That's how she's reached her VIPs. She's almost a 4K, and, ha and she's only been with this company for 14 days. She's pregnant, and as many of y'all may have experienced, um, she's also at high-risk pregnancy. She's been diagnosed with hypermess. I don't know how to pronounce this. Basically, she said, Google it. It sucks. Um, she wakes up every day and tells herself, you're going to kick ass because your daughter deserves it. And that's her reason. That's what motivates her every single day. Um, I asked her, what did you tell me about negativity? Um, she said, I don't have time for negativity any anymore. Negativity is for, um, was for off the screen. And since she started with this business, she's felt so kick ass that she refrained from any negativity at all. No negative posts, comments, social media. Um, even off the screen now, she doesn't feel possessed to even let her mind go into that negative place. And she said she's very thankful to this entire business um, for helping her have that outlet. Y'all, I didn't know that that would transform her life. I didn't know. All I knew is she was a pretty girl and she seemed down. <clears throat> she seemed to have super bad anxiety. And I, I kept thinking like, how would you ever even like be able to take a job to go to work, you know? And then I saw she was pregnant and, um, I reached out to her one more time and then she came to me and said, I, I know I need this. I know this is my answer. And so, you know, I just think like, how powerful we all are as being that light and sharing it with someone who's in need. And look what Haley's has turned in return, gone and done and made this what has totally transformed her life. So, <clears throat> you know, maybe shoot her a message. Um, if you feel inclined to, she is an amazing person who literally has no clue what she's doing. <laughs> um, and I mean that in a nice way. She's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I don't even know how to put this person in the computer. She has no clue. But all I know and all she knows is that she gets up and she works toward her next goal the next day because her and her daughter deserve it. Um, so she's super inspirational. And I wanted to share that with you guys because a lot of times we tell ourselves, well, I'm not like them. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not lucky. I'm not like them. I don't have that experience. Or they must know a lot of people. Haley knew nobody. I don't even, I mean, if we're being honest, I don't even know who's joined her. Because she's gone out and grinded and met new people in the last 14 days. Um, and dug deep in, into inspiring others. And I love her story because she is, you know, she has grinded for everything she's gotten. And it shows me that you can blaze a new trail no matter who you are, no matter what your story is, no matter where you come from, you're in control of your tomorrows. Um, okay, next person I want to talk about and talk to. <coughs> Sorry, I've been so sick. <coughs> Okay, I'm trying not to choke. I want to talk to Leanne. Hold on, let me find her. Here's Leanne. I've unmuted you. Where did you go? Um, what the was... heck is this thing doing? <laughs> there you are. Yay, what is behind you? I don't know. That's when I was just like, what is this? It looks like you have a life-size poster of yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I don't even know now where I am. <laughs> Virtual <laughs> background go away. <laughs> that was awesome. How did you do that? That looks like you had like a life-size um, poster of yourself behind you. <laughs> no clue. I don't even remember my password, so I can't even like log back into my thing anymore. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, that makes me laugh so hard. Okay. So Leanne and her team hit a huge milestone in the business today. So first of all, like congratulations. Um, did you ever think that the, that day would come? Not like because of your team, not because of just because of like where we've come from and your belief in, and stuff. What are your thoughts on that? Gosh. Um, I don't even know what to say. 
Um, I still like, I, I don't know, like it's not real. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I know that we've done it, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I still can't wrap my head around it. But what's cool is that, and, and th- I did want to make sure that I said this before we moved on to anything. Um, I appreciate, like, all of the awesome comments and stuff that I've received and I've gotten, like, some messages. But this was not Leanne. This was, like, Leanne and everybody. <laughs> like, this team, the, I mean, like, our team as a whole, like you said it earlier, we all uplift each other and we reach out to each other. I mean, heck, I messaged Shelby, like, halfway through the month and was like, um, I need to pick your brain because I'm in that space and I need to, and, and I love that no matter what rank, whoever, whatever is like, we all are not too big and too high and mighty to just go, Hey, I need to talk to you. Like, I need to know what you're doing. Um, but I want to make sure that like, I get a lot of congrats and all that kind of, and I appreciate it. And I thank everybody, but y'all, it's my team. Like, that's what is so cool is that every single person that's a part of this whole organization from me across over down whatever has done this and it's insane like I've been trying to wrap my head around it today because we've done a lot of traveling and you messaged me and then like somebody else I was just like we broke like a million dollars in sales in almost three years I didn't do that before and we've done it in, in just over a year and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's just crazy. <laughs> I don't think that answered your question at all. <laughs> yes, no, I, I know that's perfect. I love it because Leanne is, and I'm just like speak very open. I, that's how I am. I'm a very transparent leader. You know that Leanne is not the person that I would say, oh, Leanne, um, not that she's not a badass, but she does not carry herself that way. And if you've ever heard of Dustin and train on people that are afraid to lead, that reminds me of you. Not that you're afraid, but you don't give yourself enough credit and you don't like see yourself as that impactful. But the truth is, is you've done something with your team and your team has done something with your guidance that most people in this industry never do. And that's something to be so proud of. Um, the thing I do love about you is you are a very humble person. Um, I, sometimes I want to choke you because you don't believe in yourself, but I love that because that makes you who you are. And I think that's super important for other people to know that you don't wake up every day on top of the world. You don't wake up every day going, I am amazing. Like, you know, you, I would say, wake up going, okay, how am I going to get my mind right? And and (laughs) almost like that, you know, when I I always say like, you are enough, you are enough. I think like if you had an alarm clock that went off and said, you are enough, you are worthy every day, because sometimes your blessings, I feel like are so big that you're like, where did this even come from? You know? (laughs) because that's not what we were used to. We were used to struggling so bad. And so looking back, like what has been your biggest aha, your biggest takeaway, like uh, about your mindset and where it's been, because over the last year, it's been everywhere. Um, What is your number one tool to tell other people that do look up to you that are going, man, if I, my team could just break a million dollars, man, like, you know, what is your biggest piece of advice? Gosh, it's so funny because I actually had this conversation with some random thriver in my inbox earlier. Um, the most important thing I know, and, and this is funny because th- this is a conversation that you and Steph have had with me like however many times over the past year. Um, you have to understand that everybody's journey is different and you cannot you have to, it's one of those tricks, like for me, comparison is so hard. Like that's one of my triggers to, to push me into a negative mindset. And I, I notice that now and my antidote and I've, you know, found my antidote, like all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's super important to, to find a way to when you start to see somebody else and you compare yourself with that person because you want to be here. I mean, heck, I want to be out of debt. I'm still not out of debt yet. Like that's one of my biggest things. And I'm like, why aren't I making X amount of dollars? Like this is the conversation that Court and I've had like literally for a year now. And 
I'm not, I'm not ready. Like you just need to, this is something that I'm like, Court and I are like pretty transparent with y'all and about like our conversations, but, but you have to realize that you are in your, in the position that you are for a reason. And if you have not moved to the next level, it's because you're not ready yet. And maybe you need to take blinders off, like not the comparison blinders but the blinders that are holding you back from realizing what am I missing right now that's going to grow me past this level so I can step into that next position and that has been the biggest hugest part of um the past year and I would say definitely just like the last six seven eight months for sure um but yeah that I think yeah, I can remember one of our, I can remember a couple of our conversations and one of them, like, if you know Leanne, you know, like, she's the least greedy. She's not waking up every day going, I need to make another buck. Like, that's not her, especially if you're on her team. That's not how she's wired. But she gets, um she would say, well, why aren't my checks growing? And I was like, well, what, what are you focusing on? Are you just turning around focusing on your check? And she's like, well, yes. Why aren't they growing? You know, you say that, you know, you want to be inspirational and this and that. And I'm like, okay. And so like, I will never forget this. I said, well, what are you praying for? I said, are you praying like to inspire more people because if you grow the amount of people that you're inspiring and that you're offering hope to then in the background your check's gonna grow and she's like I never thought of that because she kept Mm -hmm. like putting a monetary value on um her influence I guess is the best way to say it you were like my response to Courtney was well that doesn't that, hey, that's not BV. That doesn't bring volume or something like that. <laughs> There's no BV and in inspiration, I think is what I said. <laughs> and, and yes, and I remember saying, because I know her heart, it's not like I want to make a million dollars and like claw my way up. That's not her at all. And I was like, okay, how can I like make this make sense? Like, because of I know her heart. And I remember saying, okay, well, you need to find a, a, a way to increase how many people you inspire (coughs) and she was like oh my gosh and I'm like that will increase everything around you and you know I've watched you do that I've watched you um step into where you are as a leader and where you are as a person and I love what you said about God gives us what we're ready for and trust me there are days where I'm still like oh no about like if I'm ready for all this just because it's hard when you're a leader and you're under the microscope but I love how you've grown um one of the things I would like to brag on you about is you have become a lot more open minded to having um difficult conversations and that is something that in this whole industry is hard to do. But like Zenobia always says, your friends will tell you when your shit stinks. And I think that Leanne and I and and Steph, we have that relationship now where Leanne has said like, well, what do you think about this? And I'm like, nope. And she's like, you're right. And that friendship in this business is so important. If you don't have someone like that, you need to find somebody like that because that will help you you know, stay ahead, stay ahead of that mental curve. Um, what, what does your day look like? What would you say your day looks like? Um, like my work day. Yeah. Just like your day in the life of Leanne. Oh, geez. Well, (laughs) um, honestly, the first thing this is mine's like all about, cause I do get to I'm blessed to work from home. Um, So I actually start my day with like my physical, like feeding my physical body. And I don't mean like eating, but like I do my gym like first thing in the morning because it clears my mind. I get to listen to a podcast or whatever I do while we're doing that. If I don't do that, then I, I read something quickly before I like teach my little China kids or something. I just make sure I feed my mind um, first either while I'm like working out or while like before I get started with a class and um when I finish dropping off the girls I actually even do some try to do some because I have like I have to sit in carpool for like 20 minutes with Annalie 
after we drop off. Um, so I will do like birthday messages while we're sitting in carpool. Um, and I always send a birthday message. I don't ever, and I know we've talked about this, but I, I don't ever do like post on the wall. And if I've connected with them enough, I sing happy birthday to them and voice them. <laughs> um, and, and after that, I just kind of like, I've really spent a lot of time recently, more time on self-development um, because we are at that stage, I feel like as a team where we're in like a growing and a cutting away stage. So like we're in a, not a planning season, but we're, and not in the harvest season, but we're like in the middle. So we are planted. I like to say planted, but not buried. So it feels like we're buried and I hope this doesn't throw everybody off, but sometimes when, <laughs> yes, prune, well, no, not because we haven't grown up, grown yet. Like we've been planted down. We've done like all the seeding. I hope this makes sense. And, and it feels like sometimes that we can't, like you can't see the light. And I feel like we're in that season or this is what I feel like I am. And so it feels like the team um, where we are getting those nutrients and growing like in our own different ways. Um, but it's time for me as a leader to grow in a new way. And so we are in that stage. And so I have tried to spend a lot of more, t- a lot more time self-development and I reach out to different people. Like um, I think I reached out to Julia about a book she's doing and, and I'll listen to like a new podcast or, or something. Um, but a lot, a lot of self-development. And then I'm really trying to focus on remembering those things that you told me before, because when I find myself in that mindset of, I'm not doing enough of this or my checks aren't enough or I'm not helping my team enough or whatever. Um, I know I'm not sharing enough, if that makes sense. So yeah. I try to just share a whole heck of a lot more and just have like a general conversation or excitement, like doing a quick little story video on Instagram or whatever. Um, and just constantly planting seeds for potentials. I love that because I feel like for so long in this industry, we viewed seasons as good and bad. Mm-hmm. Like it's either a good season or it's a bad season. And we would like maybe call it planting and harvesting. But what we really meant is this season sucks and this one didn't. Right. I mean, that's, but I feel like whenever you view it like that, you truly miss the point. And the message, and I swear, I believe this so strongly that if you don't freaking get the point, you will be back in that season, whatever that message, whatever that strength that God or whoever you want to believe in is trying to grow within you, you're going to be right back to square one until you open your eyes, your heart and your ears. And you're like, Okay, fine. I'm ready to listen to this lesson. And that's something I've watched with you. And I've watched that with a lot of us on this team is it used to be like, oh, we're planting or, oh, it's just not our harvest season. Well, what, what good is in that season? And I mean, I love hearing you say that because I feel like the industry gets such a bad rap at certain times of year. And I've watched people like this season, this month, I can tell you that some people could come to me and they could say, you know, my volume is the lowest it's ever been, but I could have the very next person come to me and say, my volume is the highest it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And this is why I love that. Not because, well, she has a negative mindset and she has a positive one because that's not it. It is that this person is doing growing in a different way and growing for their next level than this person. And they are, you know, maybe they're busy filling up their tackle box or their toolbox right now, right? To get to that next level. And this person will experience that as well. And it doesn't make it a negative. And I love that. Having that mindset of what am I learning at this stage? For me, I don't know about for you, but for me, it gives me like a sense of peace, a sense of calmness in where I am. No, not all day, every day, but you know, I still battle with that because I'm like you, but watching you be at peace and grow into right where you are, it's like your roots are growing. Um, Mm -hmm. I love the way you explain. And that's, that's what I mean about the, that it's, 
it's so funny because I got that analogy from this pastor that I love to listen to. He's amazing. And he doesn't sound like a preacher at all. He just sounds like an awesome motivational speaker. But he talks about like bamboo and you would love this because this is a great analogy. So bamboo, when you plant it, um, like you don't see anything sprout up for like years, like four or five years, something like that. Like it's a very long period of time. But when it grows, it grows like 48 inches in 24 hours or something like that. Like it grows two, six feet, whatever. Like it grows like really, really fast. And so I kind of like, I've kind of like latched on to that. And I'm trust, like, it's funny because before we made this transition, and I know you remember me speaking this to you, <laughs> um, trust the process, trust the process. And while there was a lot of truth in that then, I know that that was meant for now. Um, and and it's neat to see, like, you, there might be things that you heard, like, years ago before you even stepped into this industry or you got at a job or at a, in a sermon or on the radio or whatever. And if you stop for a second and let it sink in, you will see, like, all the pieces are going to fit somehow. And when you get that, that's the piece. Like, you're just, oh, okay, like, it doesn't, doesn't make, like, all the hard or all the frustration go away, but for a split second, you're like, okay, I can do this, you know, like, gives you, like, that extra fire to, to push forward, and that's what we have to do, we just have to take it, like, literally one step at a time, this is not Katie Pineda, I love to listen to that girl, um, she actually shared her story again the other day with somebody, and she was like, I've done this for five years, like I made $5,000 in my first whole entire year and people are wanting like quick fix. And I think that that's also another bad rep, rep that the, this industry gets like it's a quick fix, quick money or whatever. And it's not that it is truly a self-development time where you can grow past any like other position ever if you take it seriously enough. And that's where I think <coughs> I have kind of stepped in because I haven't taken myself serious enough um for a long time and I'm starting to <laughs> I'm getting there <laughs> so anyway I love that and I think that it goes back to a lot of you and I are a lot of like when it comes to money we're it's like our our thing that drives us and I think that it also is the thing that we used to let um label us or make us feel our worth does that make sense? Like if my paycheck went down $20, well, I must have sucked last week. You know what I mean? And I think that we're so much more than that now. And it's so cool to watch, you know, you're so much more than that. You, what you have to offer and how you are growing. Um, and the lessons that like your trials are putting you through are going to catapult you into, such great success that you that will like not even be a factor you know anymore in you and how you value yourself and I, I just love I love listening to you and I love your transformation because it's it is super amazing I mean I've been with Leanne for almost three years and I have listened to her cry I have listened to her beat herself up. I have listened to her doubt herself. Yeah, I've listened to <laughs> Yeah, I've listened to her call me crying cuz she can't talk because her paychecks are so amazing. I've gotten texts where it's like, "Oh, my paycheck was okay." Like I've seen the gamut of emotions with you and to see like it come full circle is super awesome. Um and that doesn't mean that you as a leader is perfect or that you never will have self doubt, but it's like bulletproofing your mind. And like, when you asked me to really explain that, that's when it really made me stop and think, well, what do I really mean? And I think that you are almost there, like to where your mind is bulletproof, where you know what you're up against. And now you know how to handle it. One of the things you said, which I, I love is, Leanne and I talked a lot about when you know your poison, then you know your antidote, right? So it's not even about knowing your poison. It's about what's your antidote. And so what, what did yours was the whole, it's not fair, the comparison, but then your antidote was, um, grace. 
and knowing how to show herself grace and knowing how to show others grace. And what she started focusing on was growing in her gracefulness and not because she's not graceful or because she's mean, that's not it at all, but knowing how to stop and go, okay, I'm happy for them because that's where they're supposed to be right now. And it has nothing to do with me or my self worth. And that was super cool to watch you do. And I mean, now you're a freaking million, your team's done a million dollars. And that's not by chance. You know what I mean? That's not by chance that y'all woke up and y'all have done a million dollars. That's by choice. That's by y'all getting up every day grinding. That's by having those hard conversations, making mistakes. Um, And Leanne's a perfect example of someone who has grinded, who has had self-doubt, who has made mistakes, but gets up and shows up. I will say that no matter how you feel and even whenever our attitudes haven't been the best, she still comes with her, with her attitude, regardless of how it is. And I think that's important because that I always say to people, are you willing and are you able? And Leanne's willing and able. She's a perfect example of someone who is willing and able, not someone who's perfect. None of us are, but if you're willing and able to show up and learn, you'll wake up and your team will have done a million dollars too. Like, I believe that with every ounce in me. And I am so proud of y'all. I'm proud. I've watched y'all do some amazing things. Um, You've changed my life and my husband's. You know that. I'm super grateful for your leadership, for your team, for the way you share with others, for the way you pour into others. Um, And just watching you grow has been phenomenal. So, yes, we can have a squeal, Julia. (laughs) (laughs) How are you think school about? Sorry. What should we think school about? <laughs> <laughs> um, but be proud. And I hope that Leanne, I hope you can relate to her. And I hope that her story inspires you as somebody who totally like has been in the trenches in her mind, has risen up, has not woken up every day and been like, I am hot stuff. In fact, she's more guilty of the other, you know, and if that's you and if you walk in self doubt more than not, um, I hope that her story inspires you because she's a perfect example of somebody who gets up and like kicks it every day's butt, no matter if you believe she can or not. So thank you for that. I love you for that. I do. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your team. Um, I am proud of everything y'all are doing <laughs> this month has been insane. What numbers like y'all are putting up are phenomenal and no, a number does not define us, but watching y'all's growth, watching you, uh, people explode, people that have just put their heads down, people that have gotten their minds right Um, And it doesn't mean they'll never have a hard day, right? It just means that they are making a choice every day to get up and learn and grow. We have the right product and we have the right vehicle. And you can't convince me otherwise, right? Like that question or worry, that's up on a shelf for me, right? I know we have something that's changed my life, that's changed my friends' lives, that's changed my family's life. So that isn't even a part of my equation when I deal with my self-doubt. When I deal with my self-doubt and I see my friends, it truly is them getting up and believing that they can make a difference and influence this world. So if you don't believe you can, I want you to get off of the Zoom. I want you to go look in the mirror and I want you to tell yourself like you are so worthy. You are so capable of anything you put your mind to. And I believe that like, guys, you are like, yes, Kat, you are enough and you always have been and you always will be like, you always will be, but until you, (laughs) don't know, I get distracted easy, Uh, but until you believe you're enough, um, that shift won't happen. Okay. That shift won't happen. And I want you to believe that. And I want you to speak that into your life. Y'all, I don't want you to think next month's Christmas, next month's slow, next month's this, next month's that. I want you to ask yourself when I wake up every day, am I adding value to the world? Am I leaving people better than I found them? Am I giving someone hope by the things I post, by the words that come out of my mouth, by the way I carry myself? Um, and if you can answer yes to that, you'll see yourself grow in so 
many different areas and aspects that your business will be affected, right? Um, you just have to decide that you are enough. And gosh, watching y'all change these lives to me is just amazing. Our volume, um, I mean, I am a numbers driven person, but I will never look at you and be like, oh, your volume's down. You must be sucking. I don't view people that way and I never have. But what I will tell you is I love to measure growth and our volume's way ahead of where it was last month. Um, and that gets me in my feelings because for so long I came from a place where I told people and I told my team and I told girls, just keep going, it'll get better. Just keep going, you'll get it back. And I didn't really believe that. And I still don't believe it. But I can look you in the face now and tell you that if your volume dips, it'll come back. I can look you in the face now and tell you when things are hard, they'll get better. When you get your mind right, your numbers will go up. I can actually tell you that and mean it now. And for me, that's everything. I used to tell my team that and it was like, oh, I was just hoping. No, I actually can tell you looking in the back office that I have a team of people that have gotten their heads right, that know what they're made of. And I've seen a shift in what we've been able to do and in the number of lives we've been able to change this month. One of the hardest months of the year in this industry, right? Statistically speaking, we're up. We're up and we're up because y'all believed y'all can do it. Bottom line. So this month isn't over. We have five days left in this month and you best bet I'm not done until the bell rings and then I'm going to go to sleep and wake right back up in December and start fighting again. Why? Because I deserve it. Haley deserves it. That baby growing in Haley's belly deserves it. You deserve it. Your kids deserve it. The people watching you deserve it. Um, so I just like challenge you to do the same lock arms with me and don't think, well, maybe I can get my mind right. No, you're in charge and you can get your mind right. And that's where everything starts and where everything ends. I love y'all. Have a great week. And I'm going to um, announce the next giveaway as soon as I figure out what it is, but it will be either tonight or first thing in the morning. I love y'all. And I'm so proud of y'all. Bye.